In his long speech, uh, just really two things. He says that he wants to test Kosygin's sincerity uh, by halting the bombardment and saying we are ready to negotiate within the week, making it clear that discussions cannot continue for a prolonged period without an agreement that neither side will substantially increase the size of the war in South Vietnam. Now that's the important proposal he makes. It's not important, but that's what he does. Now, we just finished doing that. I don't know where the hell he was, but uh, against the advice of our military people, against the wishes of a good many of the countries associated with us, we halted the bombardment uh, for six days. And we said we are ready to negotiate. And we pled with uh, not only Ho Chi Minh direct, I wrote him a letter that you say, you said some of my actions were unseemly, but I... Well, I'm trying to protect you. I know. I didn't I, say you were unseemly. I said almost <laughs> unseemly. <laughs> well, I just... For, for, it didn't, peace, what I it didn't hurt. I know it. It didn't hurt my... Damn doves I know, I know it. It didn't hurt my... Well, I, know, well, but I, what, I, I thought you'd have no sense to know what I did. <laughs> so now... Uh, what I want to point out to you, this is not public, but I want you to know it. I wrote Ho Chi Minh a letter, and I said to him that we will halt uh, uh, the bombing, yes, and we will uh, uh, stop uh, our augmentation of our troops if you'll stop your infiltration. Now, uh, he just turned me down flat. Did he ever reply? To yes, sir, he replied to it, and he said, uh, no soap. He said the same thing he said to the Pope. Now, that's not known, but what is known is that for six days we did just what Senator Kennedy said. We halted the bombardment and said we were ready to negotiate within the week, and we made it clear that discussions could not continue for a prolonged period without an agreement that each side would not substantially increase the size of the war. Now, we did that for six days, and each day we would repeat to Kosygin and Wilson to go and tell them that, get back. And they got back with nothing except what the Pope gave us. So we have tried within the month, during the Tet period, for six days, just what the senator proposes today. And we got the same result that we got the last time the senator proposed a pause, 37 days, we got nothing. And the same result we got with the five-day pause that he came down here and suggested that to me. Bobby originated the five-day one. Uh, the first one, we gave them two or three days' notice, told them we were going to pause, and asked them if they'd stop, we'd stop. They just when was that, Mr. President? Oh, a year and a half ago, I guess. I forgot. The last that was, that was the first time. That was the first time. Five days. He came alone to this office. He came in here and told me he had good reason to believe. These fellows play Secretary of State all around the world. And I stopped it. I notified everybody that I was going to stop it, get ready, told the Russians, see what you can do, and stopped it for five days. On the second day after I'd stopped it, they spit in their face, turned the letter back to us, and said, to hell with you, we're not interested in this. So I waited then, I don't remember, several months, I've forgotten how long, until a second one came along. Now, if you want to know the reconstruction, I reviewed it with you once, but uh, to make it short, the first man they got out there was Fulbright, and the Dobrynian told him. He came and told me. The next man they got was Mansfield. He came and told me. The third man they got was uh, Morris. He had three and a half hours. He came and told me. Then a number of others whom I do not recall, except Bundy. They got Bundy, who was then on my staff. He came and sold McNamara. Then Bundy and McNamara came and tried to sell me and Rusk. We didn't buy it. That held on several days, and I went to Texas, and they sold Rusk. Then I came back up here and had long, detailed meetings that ran for a couple of days and had Clark Clifford and the uh, head of the intelligence board and Abe Fortas to come in. Uh, I was about sold to start the, to, to start the pause, but uh, Fortas said it was outrageous and predicted exactly what would happen. So did uh, uh, Clifford. Later, uh, McNamara and Bundy said, well, you went out and picked up two men on the street that hadn't any information on this and brought them in here and then followed their advice instead of ours. I said, yeah, that's sure as hell dead. I'm not going to cause our boys to suffer down there unless I got some quid pro quo, unless they'll stop doing something. 
So that went on for about a week. I went back to Texas, refused to take them. Then General Taylor called me up and said that he didn't recommend it, but he would uh, guarantee me that if I was ever going to stop and look like I'd have to uh, get ready for the Congress with all this new money, that now was the time to do it because it wouldn't cost me anything. The weather was bad, and that they needed these planes over in Laos anyway, and that he would defend me and so forth. So I got in my plane, came back, talked to General Wheeler. And Wheeler said that uh, he didn't recommend it, that he wasn't for it, but he did see from the other angle that we ought to show some anxious, some desire for peace to try to assuage the dove, and therefore, if I did it, he could defend it, because two reasons. One, he needed these planes in Laos more than he needed them in the north, number one, and number two, the weather was so bad over the north he couldn't get anything done, but it would make it appear pretty good. Well, I didn't ever stress that. I wanted to make get all the yeah, blood out of it I could. So I just said 37 days and so forth. So I went through that one, and I was damn lucky to get back in. The last few days, it looked like that they'd keep delaying us, and they kept getting the, They had the British Prime Minister to go, and they had Ronning of Canada to go, and they sent our friends over there, and we couldn't buy them while they were there. So this time, the Ted came along. We had grave reservations about it. Our military men had grave reservations about it, but we didn't want to be bombing. Uh, we said we had uh, uh, we had agreed to go along with South Vietnam on Christmas, and if we couldn't, if we go along on Christmas and our New Year, we ought to be fair with them. So we did go along. Now, at that time, Kosygin and Wilson were meeting, so. They came to us, and I said, now, we've stopped bombing. Now is the time to get the job done. I did the same thing to Ho Chi Minh. I, I can't say that yet, because I want to keep that channel open. I'm writing back and forth to him. But I want you to know that. But they they, they had it direct that we met their man. And we delivered their man in Moscow. I letter to Ho Chi Minh. He took it back to Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh replied to me and said, no, go. Now, uh, uh, he, he, we thought, though, the fact that he never publicized that letter was an indication he is weakening and he wanted to keep that channel open. And all this other stuff, the Pope and Wilson, we thought was just so much crap, and we still think so. We don't think it, we think Kosygin wants to get out of it. We think that he's damned anxious to get out of it with the Chinese thing, what it is. But uh, he's embarrassed and he can't do anything. So uh, uh, Bobby comes along, though. One says he does. Which which letter was it that Ho Chi Minh answered and just spit in your face? Was that one prior letter? That was not what wasn't a letter to Ho Chi Minh. That was an offer. Uh, the first pause, the first five oh, days. Yeah, first five days. And Bobby Kennedy was the author of that. That was the Bobby Kennedy pause. You can you can just tell it that you understand that when you when you were opposing it that he had more influence than you did. That he got the first pause five days, then he got the next one for 35 days, 37. And he's got the last one for six days. But nowhere, any time, can he give you one damn word from a noise. Now, they can quote preachers and teachers. And they can quote Kosygin, and they can quote Wilson. And they can quote Utah and Goldberg. But they're damned if you can get it from Ho Chi Minh, and Ho Chi Minh is talking to us and writing to us, and you know that he knows how to get a message to us if he wants to. Well, now, they're voting in there yep. and on Rule 22, and yep. I've got to vote now. What, what part of this can I use other than this last... You part? can use every bit of it except Ho Chi Minh's letter, where I wrote Ho Chi Minh. You I can see. say all the rest of it. And he... Uh, but now, we have, to all right to say, have communicated with him through other Yes, sources. yes, sure, sure, uh, sure, sure. Right. And the main thing is, he says, halt the bombardment and make it clear that we'll negotiate, but we won't wait long. Well, tell him we halted the bombardment in Tet. We made it clear we'd negotiate through Kosygin, and we did wait six damn days, period. And that what, what he's suggesting this week, we you just finished doing two weeks ago over your protest. All right, I'll... I'll and they build up 50 days... I have misgivings about getting in debate with yeah. a little bit, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll okay. see about it.